Howdy. Six hours ago at the Azores region there has been a 5.2. EMEC reports that it's 2 kilometers in depth. Other report that it's 10 kilometers in depth. There is also deeper quake activity in the Strait of Gibraltar, 80 kilometers in depth, 2.5. But now we want to go to Switzerland, because there has been a very deep quake in Switzerland five hours ago. 750 kilometers in depth. That is very unusual. Very unusual. We are in Eschlikon. There is a water vein going very close to the location of the quake, actually on both sides. It's between two water veins. And this one stops here, continues here and stops here, or it is the other way around. Let's see into which direction they probably flow. They might not necessarily flow into the Lake Constance. They could. But. These might seem to flow somewhere else. And we have not too far from the quake is some mining operation. So I have been trying to figure something out about that quake. And we are at the Argau Geothermal Power Plant Association, Geothermal Energy in Switzerland. A study of by PSI, Paul Scherrer Institute, a place from which I still wait an answer or a response or whatsoever. In 2005 showed that the theoretical geothermal potential in Switzerland at a depth of 3 to 7 kilometers can be estimated at around 16 million terawatt per hour. The recovery fact factor here is 4% and the efficiency thereof is 4. This results in 64,000 terawatt per hour? No, per year. Here it says per year. Annual electricity consumption in Switzerland is 58 terawatt per year. A small potential comparison with other alternative electricity producers such as small hydroelectric power plants, biogas, solid biomass, wind and photovoltaics after 2050 shows that the geothermal potential could generate by far the highest electricity production. production. However, this potential is not yet technically secured in contrast to all other alternative power generators. Geothermal energy supplies base load energy, i.e. the resource geothermal energy is permanently available. And I think the quake is somewhere in this region here. And I grew up in this region here, <laughs> where it's very red, very red. Figure one, heat flow map of northern Switzerland. Temperature measurements from 59 boreholes were available for depicting the geothermal heat flows in northern Switzerland. Source, NACRA, hmm. technical reports, main department for the safety of nuclear facilities. Yeah. 
More than 30 years ago, various national research programs led to the discovery of the heat flow anomaly. In the city triangle Koblenz, Baden, where I grew up, and Bad Surzach, the heat flow there is sometimes over 130,000 30 megawatts per square meter. This value is about 60% above the average Swiss heat flow of 80. Whatever MW square meter. A surprisingly high heat flow of 142 megawatt per square, maybe, was measured in 2007 and 8 when the depth of EWS of Oftringen was created. There may be other undiscovered heat anomalies in the Swiss subsoil. Precisely these areas with particular high heat flows can be particular can be of particular interest for future theo geothermal map. Oops, doesn't work. So maybe we have to make something. Let me do. So that's a heat flow map screenshot, or however you put it, pin to screen. That's Zurich Lake Constance, it's going here. So the quake here happened approximately somewhere here. So, somewhere here, we have the river Tour, which is going here. And it seems to discharge in the Rhine. So there is no borehole in that location. These are, are the boreholes where they were measuring. Now that's really hot spot, you know. This place near Bruck. And it could be that the one of the world's oldest still functioning nuclear power plant is either here in between or in this part. <laughs> Where is also the PSI, the Paul Scherrer Institute, and the synchrotron light source of Switzerland. Anomaly by Schinsnachbad. Baden? Yes. But that's about the geothermal activity, or potential, or however you want to put it. So there is something undeniable. Not too far away from this very hot spot. But we want also to check something else out. Which is the ETH Zurich. Eidgenössische Technische Hochschule. Last many days, earthquake in Switzerland. All registered earthquakes in Switzerland and neighboring countries in the, in the last 90 days. Click on the map for an interactive view. Check it out. There is no such thing as a deep quake here on their map. Of course, I went to the Swiss earthquake application to check it out, but there is nothing. Let's try again. Maybe it just needed to update, but whatever. Yeah, there is nothing going on. It's just an empty spot. Actually, no.
How does that work? It must be this one. Can we click on that? Here. No. That doesn't really work. But I think it might be this one. Magnitude 1. Yeah, that's really difficult to use, this application. As you can see. <laughs> yeah, this doesn't really work. Earthquake country Switzerland earthquake monitoring. Leuker bath, bath, geothermal activity, sun edge pass, which is also very interesting. I made videos about that too. Mulhus, 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 Mulhus. Sun edge pass. Gourmaya. Jamoni. Gourmaya, Gourmaya. Does it help anything to click on that? I don't know. Event information. Where are we? This might be outside of Switzerland. Hmm. Yeah, that's boring. So anyway, here is the hotspot we saw earlier, where it's very hot. Here is this Quake hotspot, which is always there. There is a mining operation. We have not too far. We have the Jura Park of Argau, where we have Oolithic iron ore. The biggest occurrence in the whole Jurassic region, as far as I understood. Here in Baden, you can see already it's marked Museum Langmat, and here we have the hottest and most mineral rich thermal baths of whole Switzerland. There are 18, 18 springs in this vicinity. And here we have the Paul Scherrer Institute PSI, <laughs> which made all these knowledge or platforms. We have the synchrotron radiation, synchrotron Lichtquelle Schweiz, we have, if we go a bit downstream, nuclear power plant, one of the oldest still functioning in the whole world. It is very interesting here in this hill, somewhere here, I guess, is a contemporary storage facility for nuclear waste safely stored in the mountain <laughs> and there is the deep quake and there is another quake and here are all those nuclear things in between and there are like other nuclear power plants just very close to them here is one nuclear nuclear as Homer Simpson likes to pronounce it and if anyone he's an expert yeah i think that's very interesting a 3.6 so there might be some stronger earthquake activity coming into switzerland why not in the vicinity of the geothermal hotspot you know, but we have to keep an eye on that. The Swiss don't really report about that. I haven't seen any news. Maybe there is, but I didn't have the time yet to dive into that. So I just wanted to point out that there might be something brewing beneath our feet. 
especially when you look at maps like this. It's undeniable that there is something. And hopefully it's not too much underestimated. In terms of also danger potential, not only geothermal potential. Because approximately here, let's make a little bit bigger. Here we have a volcano, Kaiserstuhl volcano, which is probably extinct. But they don't really take cryptodomes and these kind of things into account. So the possibility there being many, many, many more volcanoes and such things as is geothermal activity like hot springs should be taken as part of volcanic activity into account as well. This is my point of view. Because there are like hundreds of other places all around the world where we have volcanoes and geothermal activity and it is very straightly related to the volcanic activity in the region. Let's take for example Yellowstone. There might be hot springs which are rather far off the main thing in a way but they are still related to it because it's a super volcano. And here, no, we just have geothermal activity. It doesn't mean anything. It's a endless source of energy. We just have to tap into it. It's totally safe, says the main department for the safety of nuclear facilities. More than 30 years ago, various national research programs led to the discovery of the heat flow anomaly. Yeah, this might mean something. And obviously, this continues. This just doesn't end at the border, of course. Here we have the River Rhine, which comes from here, and then it turns off north to the next volcano. And this region might continue, however big it is. But since Switzerland ends there, they don't know what's on the other side. Of course they know, but it's not on that map. But I leave it here. It's very interesting to follow. There is something going on deep under Switzerland. But simultaneously also something going on on the surface of Switzerland. It's red in it's marked in red and orange. There are other hot plumes there. Here. Basically almost all the cities in this vicinity, or maybe even bigger. And I mean like bigger places. There might be something geothermal related in this village which is rather ancient hundreds or even thousands of years old. But nowadays it's probably not warm anymore. It has been. Now there's just simple, basic, average, random water pouring out of the mountain. But many, many years ago, the situation might have been different. And it has been, if it has been different once upon a time, there is no reason why it shouldn't change. Either the water stops totally of like pouring out of the mountain, or there is more and the temperature might rise. So we have to take everything into account. And we have to follow that. That's very interesting. Very interesting. Current projects in Switzerland. Something does work. The energy is among us. Indeed. I leave it here. Thanks.